guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Leona, I'm also known as Record Transformations. I'm an online coach, a personal trainer and a bodybuilder. And um, today we're going to look at a video from Emily Reed. It's called Finally Somebody Who Cares. So I was debating about reacting to her because of what she's been going through. At the same time, she, it, she admits herself that she needs money <laughs> to pay for her medical bills. So reaction channels do help bolster her revenue streams. Obviously, I am also aware of what she's been through. I don't wish that upon anybody. The pictures looked very scary. It's sad that she had to resort to putting pictures online. However, she does troll a lot. She's admitted to trolling. And this is what happens when you cry wolf a lot. People don't always believe what you're saying. And that's sad, but it's a byproduct of the environment she's created. I did go through most of her recent uploads and I've done really, really anything for me to add into. However, I started listening to this particular one and yeah, I feel like there are some things we, that we can talk about in particular in this video. Yesterday it was also Blackout Tuesday and of course I participated in it. Uh, I did a post on my community tab and some people were asking what difference does it make and it doesn't really make a difference. The only difference, the only thing that I can do as an influencer living in the UK is I can show moral support and I can open myself up to learning and trying to understand what people are going through and therefore change my view on the world and become more understanding of what people are going through. And for the, I have to say that since I've been on YouTube, I have learned an awful lot about people's life experiences. I get people message me every day. I always go through my comment section. Well, not always, for the most part, sometimes I don't have the time to do it, but for the most part, I go through my comment sections. I read the comments. Um, I Every day, every single day, I do message people on Instagram and people tell me their stories. I think I am realizing for the first time um, that where I am in this world, it does make a difference. And that, and I find it, I find it hard to believe that these injustices exist because I don't see it doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't exist right and I do think they are definitely amplified in places like America compared to what well, they are in Europe and I'm only talking from my own personal experience I know that racism and discrimination it definitely does happen but I just I just don't feel like it is the same way as what it is in America and there's not much I can do about it. I, I can't, I can't, I live I live in a different continent, right? But what I can do is I can listen to people's stories. So I listen to people that are on the ground, that have been to protest, that are seeing what the police are doing. I am listening to people who are in, in interracial relationships and the, the problems that they have from even their own family from not being supportive. I listen to people who are a mixed race or of a different religion or that are a different skin color and just the experiences that they have that are negative because of their skin color or their religion. And it's it's sad, like I, I genuinely cannot believe that this happens. All that I can do is listen to people and understand stories and take them on board for, from first-hand experiences because I feel like they resonate a lot more if I hear them from somebody's mouth directly compared to something somebody is saying online or a news story that's being spun a certain way. I think change happens when you start with yourself, right? It's all well and good to preach to the world, but you need to follow up on those actions with yourself. So if you wanna tell me your stories of what you've been through, feel free to either comment down below or message me privately and I will happily listen because I, I need to broaden my my scope of understanding yeah it's also partially i don't i don't see people in color or in religion or in sex it doesn't matter to me i judge people on who they are as individuals and i guess we need to also talk about things like this because it is hard to talk about i'm not gonna lie because who am i to talk about who am i to talk about race and race problems when it's clearly not something that has directly impacted me like that have i been a subject of discrimination yeah I have I think everybody probably has experienced discrimination at some point in their life but there's levels right and just on what's going on uh, it's very hard to get a story of what's going on because the news media in the UK are not fully reporting on what's happening I'm seeing footage of officers I'm seeing footage of police officers that are acting inappropriately and I'm also seeing footage of police officers that are doing their best and that are being supportive um, 
I'm seeing people that are peacefully protesting and I'm seeing people that are looting and destroying and vandalizing and rioting and burning the properties of homeless people. I mean, I saw it. I saw a video of the essay. It broke my heart. This poor man, literally all his, all his belongings were just being burnt. Why? This man, what, what is that? How is that anti-establishment? How is that fighting for black lives? by burning a homeless man's properties. It's just, I can't stand behind that. But people should be allowed to protest in peace and they shouldn't get tear gassed either. So there is, there's a lot going on and it's really, really complex, which makes it also hard to talk about. And it makes it also hard to find valuable uh, sources of information, which is also why I kind of don't wanna promote sources of information too much because if it's a wrongful, if it's a source of information that's incorrect, it's gonna backfire on me. So I did mention in my community post yesterday, Philip DeFranco and mixed reviews. The reason I liked his video, I never know, I've never heard of the guy before. I've heard of him, I've never watched his stuff before. The reason I liked it, his video is because he showed both sides and he didn't really take a side. He showed, all right, here's good cops, here's bad cops, here's good writers, here's good protests, here's bad protests. And it's more, it's a more balanced view than most other news outlets. Most other news outlets have an agenda of some sort. And that's like, I like to see things from all sides before I come to a conclusion. And I don't know what's going on. I honestly don't. I know too little about it. There's too much conflicting information out there. So briefly before we get into the video, I just want to talk about Hayden Nation. Um, we're not in cahoots. I'm not out to cancel anybody. I don't actually want to see anybody deplatformed. I what I want is for people to be responsible and to be accountable for their actions. In this current climate, to potentially be accusing somebody of being a racist is a very detrimental and very damaging, and it could have very long-lasting effects on that person's life. So criticism exists. People can be critical of other people despite their skin color. This has nothing, this has nothing to do with race. If you look at my channel, half of it is vlogs. The other half is reactions. A lot of these reactions are other fitness people. It's not just Amber. It's not just foodie beauty. I just wanted to put that out there before people make accusations, before people make accusations that these are accusations you do have to be careful with. They are very damaging and it doesn't help the problems that are in the world by creating further divide and and uh, and slandering people. Anyway, guys, so that's kind of out of the way. I don't want to keep bringing things up. I don't ever bring things up, by the way. I always do it in defense. People may not see it because they're not aware of it, but I I only talk about things in defense. I never bring things up just out of the blue. <sighs> and breathe. Right, so now that's out of the way, let's get into this video, shall we? Hey guys. So it is June 2nd. I did upload a video today, given a small update, but I have this before I forgot. So I was talking to Becky and I know that she said the surgeon slash gyno, he's a gyno. So thank you guys for telling me that. He came out after my DNC and talked to Becky. And I guess Becky told me most of this, but again, it was like right after my anesthesia. And I don't remember a lot, not fully after that whole thing, but all right, so she did upload a video before this, and I have seen it. She doesn't really... What does she talk about? She just... She just talked about her blood work being bad, which I'm surprised... I'm not surprised by it whatsoever. And uh, she talked about that there's some things going on with Becky and her family, which, from what I understand, there is. I'm not going to really elaborate on it. I don't feel like it's my place. So, yeah, just to break up the talking, this I break up her talking. I'm sorry. I have seen so many doctors in my life and I'm just going to talk about the doctors I've seen in the last 10 years. I'm just going to say 10 years. None of them have ever mentioned my weight. All right. I don't believe that. I absolutely categorically do not believe that. First of all, if you've seen that many doctors in your life that you have to narrow it down to the doctors of the last 10 years, I go to a doctor maybe once a year, if not even, probably not even that. If you need to go to a doctor so often because you're sick all the time, there's something wrong with you. I do not believe that doctors are not mentioning her weight. It's impossible. Well, for a starter, she says herself her blood work was really bad and very scary in the previous video. Your blood work, granted it can change. Of course it can change, but it's not gonna be perfectly healthy to being very sick 
within a spe within a ma within the space of a couple of months. I won't, I can't imagine it does. Numbers can change, but not that vastly. I don't think so, unless you have something that's quite literally eating you up inside, something that's destroying you from the inside. Another thing is, is people have told her that her weight is a problem, and she shouts fat shaming. Fat shaming, you can't tell me how whether I'm healthy or not by looking at me. This is where I get confused in terms of the whole body positive in healthy in every size movement. Do we? Are doctors allowed to mention weight or are they not? Because it sounds like if they mention weight, they're fat shaming. And if they don't mention weight, they're bad doctors. Most, I'm going to guess that a majority of problems that are underlying, especially around um, uh, blood pressure, diabetes, etc. These are a byproduct of obesity and obesity kills. This is why it's called morbid obesity. What is it, what is it that people want? I get it's not fair if you go to the doctor and say there's something wrong with you and they're like, oh, well, it's just because you're fat. That's not right. They need to still check you. But it's more likely than not that whatever the problem is, is exaggerated or driven by the fact that there is obesity there. I'm not saying with all problems, and maybe it depends, I guess, like if you've got, I don't know, I don't know, I don't even know, but I'm just confused by this statement. People have said to her many a times that her weight is a problem. Of course it is. She is like five foot three, five foot four, whatever, it doesn't matter, and she weighs five, six hundred pounds. Her body is under so much stress. I just simply cannot believe a doctor, not a single doctor ever told her that her weight was a problem. I just don't believe it. I don't believe that out of the, all of the, these hundreds of doctors that she's seen over the last 10 years, not a single one told her her weight is a problem. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe she's just been incredibly lucky, uh, incredibly unlucky with her doctors, but it's the chances of possibility are highly unlikely. Never, not a single one, which always frustrated me so much because in my, uh, my opinion, did it though? Because I, I feel like whenever we talk about her health, or her weight and it being a problem it's fat shaming so i'm fairly sure she's used this argument also but i could be confusing her with other weight loss channels but i'm fairly sure she has said that people that mention her weight are fat shaming her so what is it do you want to hear the truth or is the truth fat shaming i mean i feel like when someone is the size that i am i feel like that is one of the first things a doctor needs to talk to you about because that's like walking in on someone where visibly they have a health issue and you just ignore it. That's the way that I see it. I know a lot of other people see it that way too because you guys have talked about it um, with me or seen it in the comments and stuff like that. So never do they say anything about my weight. I, I, I just struggle to believe that. I don't see how a physician can not mention that, especially when a lot of problems that she is having are to do with the fact that she is obese. For example, she ongoing... Um, uh, all urinary problems, the fact that this problem that she's having with the irregular bleeding, that's a side effect of obesity. It's the same thing with me, like when I get lean, I don't get periods either. If you're, if you have, are too low on body fat, the periods stop. If you're too big, the periods become irregular. She's always been in denial about having sleep apnea, and but she's never been willing to get it tested either. So it's almost like, I feel like she is very selective in the information she takes on board. So I think maybe doctors have worded things in such a way that it's like, all right, this is the problems and maybe you should consider losing weight in order to heal better, not have these problems, be more mobile, whatever, fix the help with remedying your, your mental problems. And I think she may interpret that as my weight, like, I'm not too big. As opposed to maybe this doctor just turning around and go like, yep, you're too fat. Do you see what I'm trying to say? I think, unless you're super direct with her, she may interpret the wording to suit whatever she wants to hear internally. And I get it, like, you don't want to hear you're sick. It's not a nice thing. But at the same time, when you're that big, you do have to realize that it is a problem. I don't know if it's because it's a weird subject, but that's okay. And I have always wanted a doctor to tell me how it is when it came to my weight. And it's like, no doctor ever did. And when I saw the weight loss doctor, it's because I called the weight loss doctor. I mentioned it to my doctor at the current time that I wanted to see. But surely the weight loss doctor would have said also 
that there is serious health implications around being obese. I can't see how not. Like, it's a doctor's duty of care to explain these things. It's, I, I just think that she's choosing to not listen to it because it's more convenient. And that's maybe, maybe it is a way of, um, like, a self-preservation. Maybe it is, uh, the reality is too harsh to, to process because, you know, it's... I mean, who wants to hear that they're essentially you know, killing themselves slowly. That's, but that's the reality. That is the reality of it, right? But I can see how that's like, being honest with yourself and accepting of the truth, it's not easy. And it takes a lot of, it takes a big person to be able to take on board criticism. So I don't know, I can see, I can see, I can kind of understand where she, why she's suddenly shocked by this, but I don't think she's never been told these things before. Wait, I'll talk to because they didn't bring it up to me. And they're like, okay, well, I'll do a referral. It was probably, a month or two later and I still wasn't referred so I did it myself so let's go to god when did I get this done four or five days ago time is like not a thing for me right now so Becky Bree told me what he said right after I got out of the DNC and he said he told her about the Hyman thing let me go back into that and then he told her that I mean I know there's some speculation going around around the Hyman thing I'm not gonna it's not something I'm gonna come as well I'm not a doctor at the end of the day I don't know I don't know how easily they're broken there was complications because of my weight. And then he said, if she doesn't do something about it now, she won't have much longer. I'm so surprised that this is, I mean, I guess it's just one of those things where, you know, anybody that has been in some addiction or that has been in a, a rut mentally, sometimes it does take that outsider point of view to say something for you to, um, snap out of it or accept the situation or the gravity of the situation it's it's a tough love right sometimes it may not work for everybody but people do need to be hit, told the truth and the truth is not always nice to hear and it's not always nice to accept but you know inside when people are telling the truth so and if you know they are telling the truth then all you can do is take that on board learn from it and change moving forward I clapped I did I do mm. I literally did a round of applause I I'm so happy to hear that because not only did he make my case super urgent when I went into the ER, but now he's talking about how I'm not going to last much longer because of my weight. I know to a lot of people, you don't want to hear that. I'm, I'm really surprised why she's so happy that he told her this. It makes no sense to me. So this means that she was aware of this all the time. But if you've been aware of the fact that your life is in actual danger, um, you, you don't have longevity of life, you're lucky to maybe make it to the age of 40. Why are you not doing anything about it, though? I know she's been kind of trying to lose, but let's face it, she stagnated for a solid month or two. I believe she lost weight. Yes, she stagnated. And at her size, that is... It's not cool. She should be able to lose more weight. A lot more weight, a lot faster. And Or she should at least be able to continue losing weight, even if it's like a pound a week. I don't care. The weight loss shouldn't stagnate. Not at her size. So I'm just really perplexed by why she's so happy with this. Like, it makes no sense. It, like, it's almost like, I told you so, I knew I was going to die, but nobody believed me. And it's like, well, if you know that, why don't you change yourself? Why don't you make a change for the better? It's, very, it's a very weird reaction. Uh, and I don't either. But finally, someone cares. And that's all I've wanted a oh, doctor my. to literally stare me in the face and tell me you need to freaking lose weight right now. He didn't do it to me then because, you know, the whole situation. But the fact that he did it and said it to Becky, I'm just like... Any more of that in my life. I really truly do. But surely people have told her this. Like this is the reason there's a whole community out there. I mean the community's out there because she she misrepresents a lot of information. But at the same time, we're all taught telling her that her her size is her is a problem, is detrimental to her health. This is what people are talking about on Kiwi Farms. This is what people are talking about in her comment section. This is what the the reaction community are talking about. This is even what other like people within the health and fitness sphere are talking about. So why is it? Why is she so? I don't get why. Where this is this um, uh, this almost like not like but I don't understand where this epi like epiphany is coming from. She this is not news. Am I, I do missing have something? Him in two weeks, which I'm excited for. So I know he's a gyno, but. I still feel like he can refer me to maybe a dietitian, a nutritionist, maybe another weight loss doctor, um, maybe the same one I went and saw, because like I said, I am in a really different mind frame regarding that because I'm down 75 pounds, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, oh my God, I just wanted to share that because it was kind of cool because doctors don't ever say anything about my weight. 
I don't understand. I still don't believe it. <laughs> understand. But it finally happened. And it's exciting. But it's also scary. I don't know. Is that weird? Why am I sharing this? Um, She's having a very strange reaction to this. This is not the reaction I would expect from somebody who is basically been told that they don't have longer to live. Why would you be happy about that? It makes no sense. This whole this is why I want to do a reaction to it because I don't know, am I am I just the only one here that is not understanding this reaction? I just don't I just don't get it. You know. And a lot of people are saying you're milking this whole thing. Oh, not even close. Um I had so many people ask, can we have daily updates, no matter even if it's something super small? And I was like I'm not sure about daily updates, but I can update you guys as much as possible. Um, this whole YouTube thing is going to be very different because you guys might get two videos from me every day or three or zero. Like, it just depends how many things I need to say. Plus, I still have the pre-recorded videos. So you guys might be getting a lot of videos from me. I don't know. It just depends. But I just had to share that. And if I am annoying people with the updates, just don't watch them. I mean, that's the only thing I can really say. Because I know if someone I cared about, whether that be a family member, friend, or a YouTuber I watch, if they were going through something, I would want updates. And I just appreciate hey. all the... Yeah, I don't have a problem with the updates. I think that's a good thing she's doing, especially following those pictures. I mean, they were they were pretty gruesome, so I would probably go to ER if I had a period like that. Um, I think she's doing the right thing by keeping her people updated, by keeping uh, keep, by keeping her viewers updated, and I do genuinely hope she doesn't have cancer. That would be that would be so scary. Like I can't even imagine to what that's like to hear those words. So you know, I feel sorry for I do feel sorry for her, and I do hope she's going to do better for herself and she's getting healthier, but it's it's not about talking it's about doing especially with in situations like this so time will tell time will tell if she's going to take it serious and to the people who are rude about it i don't know um it just shows the kind of people you are i guess it is what it is i just i get way too i am just <laughs> people judge me way too much like how am i trying to say it people judge me more than they need to for sure but i'm an easy target which we all know anyways um i just have to share that little tidbit okay well bye Alright, so that was just a quick one. I have quite a busy day, so I'm just going to end the video here. I hope you've enjoyed. <sighs> Troubling times, guys. But we keep on pushing forward. Comment, like, subscribe if you want. If you don't want to, that's fine as well. My Instagram details are in the description box. If you want to share your personal stories with me, I will happily listen. Um, it's all I can do is just start, start change with yourself. And that will help change in the world. Alright, I am going to go. I will see you in the next one. Ciao.